how to film a football game. I'm a lefty. Boom, just like that. I'm using a marker board as if like is, I'm a basketball coach or something. Football coaches don't really use marker boards, do they? Anyway, I thought that was cool, but probably was lame. What up y'all, it's your boy Ty. I got a special video for you today. We're gonna break down my thought process and philosophy when it comes to filming a football game. And I'm pretty much gonna share with you everything I do and that I've learned over the last four or five years of filming football for University of Michigan, Cam Newton, NFL Films. I'm gonna talk about my positioning and placement on the field with you guys with this visual and I'll break it down here in a minute. I'm an artist, you're gonna love this artwork. It brings me back to kindergarten. And I'm gonna use this as a visual representation with this uh, gaff tape I got on my table here to pretty much break down my positioning. So for today, the scenario we're gonna talk about is if, if you work for a team, because I feel like most of my followers or the people who are probably gonna watch this video probably work for a college team or a high school team or even maybe an NFL team. Now with that said, you are covering both teams but you do have a priority. So with that said, 12 noon kickoff outdoors. All right, and this is gonna be our scenario, team A versus team B. So the first thing I wanna break down is pregame. I'm gonna put my bag somewhere over here, midfield between the 40 and 40. Hopefully I can get a outlet to plug my charger in because if we don't have our batteries charged, we're not gonna be able to film. The first thing I do is take one quick little lap. And the reason I do that is I wanna look at different lighting scenarios. And I also wanna look at different backdrops. I wanna see, what's gonna look good in my frame and composition when I'm filming, and I don't wanna pick this stuff out during the game. So right after that, I'm going to head out of the stadium and get my exteriors. 11 a.m., which would be about an hour before kickoff, and this is when the players are gonna start coming out onto the field. So get your tunnel shots if you have locker room access because you work for the team. Guys taping up, wrists, ankles, putting on pads. Now when these players start to come out roughly about 30 to 40 minutes before the game, because they will come in and come out, back to the locker room, then they'll come out again. So when they come out about 30 minutes to kick off and they're actually in the helmets and their full pads and gear, they're gonna have quick position group huddles. That is when you can get your audio. Now you need to get as close as possible. Y'all know what's up. Physical all day, speed all day. When we get that ball, we take it to the crib. Y'all hey, know that. 30 minutes or less before kickoff, fans start to fill the stadium a little bit so it starts to look better and you can shoot a little more wide. The players are gonna go back into the locker room for one last time. Obviously I would follow them if I have access to the locker room and get that speech. 60 minutes. The team run out, set up for that shot, whatever the case might be, something wider, something tighter, whatever you wanna do. Let's go ahead and fast forward to National Anthem, because this is like 10, 15 minutes prior to kickoff. I just like the wide lens at this point because the stands are full, so I like the wide perspective atmosphere that can show rather than shooting tight. So the first thing I'm gonna do right before kickoff, literally right before, because I'm getting guys dapping up near the bench as close as possible, depending on my access, because you can get some cool moments there that kind of bridges and breaks up pregame stuff to game action in your edit. All right, now we're getting ready for kickoff and I'm gonna use these uh, visuals. We're gonna have team B, this is our scenario, 12 noon kickoff. Team B, which is not our priority, is gonna kick to our team, team A. I'm gonna go about five yards um, in front of the ball, once I grab my hi-hat and my 7200, if I don't already have the 7200 in my backpack, I probably do. And I can get a shot with my wide angle or if I have time, once I set my frame to swap lenses to the 7200 and get that foot to ball action. I like to get that and I don't wanna miss that shot because I think it's a good transition from your pregame scene in your edit to your game action highlight. So boom, they kick the ball downfield. All right, our team receives it. Whatever yard line they get tackled on, you know, I'm gonna film that play. It could be a touchback, whatever the case might be. But if our team happens to run it back for a touchdown, I'm in a great spot here, all right, where I'm at a good angle and I'm close to that, rather than going down here on the receiving end, okay? And if they run it down for a touchdown, I don't have the best angle for that. Once our special teams gets off the field and OND is coming on the field, I'll have the time to run with my hi-hat down here. And now we have our offense on the field. Let's say we're on the 20. All right, so here's the ball and we are team A going this way. Now, first thing I wanna mention is you gotta know what your quarterback's hand is. Is he right or left-handed? If the quarterback was to drop back for a pass, he's gonna open up to my camera right here. So when the quarterback opens up after the hike, we wanna be on this side because you can get the best shots um, and seeing his face, his eyes downfield, and you got a good look at a good throwing motion. You like that? Is that a good throwing motion? Looks like a first down that, you know, you get it. Anyway, if our quarterback is a lefty, 
Then we're gonna be doing a lot of running because again, our team bench is on that side of the field. If he is a lefty, I would be going all the way over here. Everything else that I'm gonna talk about applies the same way, but we need to be on the open side. If you shoot opposite of the sun, you're gonna have some good backlight, which can look very cinematic. The players will be more of a silhouette at 12 noon or one o'clock game, but we need to be on the side that the quarterback is on. If he's a lefty, I'm gonna have to run over here. And then guess what? As we work down as a touchdown, I'm gonna have to run all the way over to the team bench. So I'm gonna be five yards behind and priority number one is B-roll, high speed, high frame rate shots that I can use in my edit. Or if I'm giving my footage to someone to edit, they're gonna appreciate those B-roll high speed shots that they can use as cutaways. And you might be asking why are you starting with B-roll because I don't wanna be in the fourth quarter with five minutes or less to go in the game and the score is 14 to 14 and I need to be capturing the game winning drive. I don't wanna be worrying if I have enough B-roll for my edit later. So we need to be thinking ahead when it's zero to zero and my team throws a bomb and I miss it because I'm, I'm focusing on B-roll. I'm willing to gamble and take that chance. All right, as our team moves up to midfield, let's say roughly the 50, as they go up, I'm staying five yards behind the ball, roughly. But once they get here, you're gonna run into the team bench. Let me grab my uh, beautiful media people here. Once the team gets to midfield, all the media people are gonna go down here to set up for the touchdown. My philosophy is I'm gonna go behind the team bench for one or two plays. If my team scores a touchdown, it is what it is. So we're moving forward. Let's say our team gets inside the 40, 35, 40. At this time, I'm gonna move down. So media is gonna kind of wrap around, get in this corner here. I'm gonna go about eight to 10 yards um, deep in the end zone, which is pretty much the back corner. I'm basically setting up for that touchdown that comes in this corner of the end zone. My priority number one is still B-roll. Up until they snap the ball, I'm filming as much B-roll as I want. I'm shooting high speed, high frame rate, so I can get wide receiver gloves, I can get their feet. Now I'm gonna do this more down here compared to earlier in the game because there is a potential touchdown now because they're pretty close to the touch to the end zone. But here, I wanna set up where I can get B-roll priority one and potential touchdown play. All right, let's say our team scores a touchdown, for example, right? Touchdown, boom, I capture it, great shot. And I'm basically gonna follow these players off the field if again, if I have team access to the bench, I'm gonna go in there. If we don't, which a lot of people don't, I'm gonna get as close as I can. And I'm waiting for the players to celebrate with each other, dap up, take their helmet off, show emotion, personality. And I'm gonna stick in there for like one to two seconds. Yo, I got the good shot, let's go. Because special teams are gonna come on the field for the kickoff and I wanna be ready to shoot for that. You know, I got a quick release plate on my hi-hat. I'll just pop it off and I'll run with it or I'll just carry the hi-hat, looks goofy as hell. If it's too heavy for you, get in the gym, baby. Get in the gym, we gotta work out, let's go. Let's reverse though. Let's say our team is gonna kick a field goal because they run out of downs. I am actually gonna scoot up to about here because if I stay here, I'm gonna be blocked. I'm not gonna be able to see foot the ball for our field goal kicker. So I have a better angle behind our offensive lineman to see the kicker make the kick. The other shot that you can get though, and again, if I do this shot, first time. The next field goal opportunity, I'll probably go to the other one. That way I have two different looks by the uprights and you can get a tight window shot on the kicker. I like this, I think it looks good. Now you're gonna miss the kick there though, unless you can squeeze it in between the lineman's legs and feet if you're low enough. So that wraps up those two scenarios. Our team is gonna be coming back here, special teams come on, and now we're gonna kick the ball this way. Again, we wanna set up for the best spot for what we're filming, which side of the ball, our offense or defense, and the best potential play possible. That's why I'm gonna stay down here instead of going to the other side. So from here with my 7200, I can get foot the ball, follow the ball, or at least pan, but I wanna be in that spot to get that boom, that big hit, he blew him up. Check out my sound pack, football SFX, use the crunch pack right here. Now, their offense comes onto the field, our defense comes onto the field. Priority number one is B-roll. It's the exact same as the offense, exact same. So in this scenario, I'm gonna be on this side, our team bench side, because I can just get more game coverage over here. Now their quarterback, let's say he's right-handed, which is most common, when he opens up, I'm gonna see his back. It's the opposing team quarterback, I don't care. I'm not gonna come all the way around for that. Maybe the defense goes three and out. I need to be able to run all the way over there. I'd rather just stay on that side of the field. Now, if I'm filming both teams um, and I don't work for a team, then I'm probably gonna be on the open side of the quarterback. That way I have open side on both ends of the offense. But I'm gonna go roughly one to five yards, same philosophy behind the line of scrimmage. Just in case there is a sack or tackle for loss, we don't wanna miss that. So if our DN comes off the line or a linebacker shoots through the gap, 
I want to be able to get that big hit in the backfield, use my crunch sound effect, football SFX pack, don't sleep on it, it's the best on the market. So I want to be able to in a good spot for that one to five yards behind. You can get your DN setting up off the end, fingers in the dirt, getting ready for the ball snap, uh, linemen crashing, helmets colliding, linebacker over the middle is a good one, calling out plays, B-roll is priority, but I'm in a good spot for that sack or tackle for loss. If I was to go way downfield or even down here, and there's a sack play by our defense, you have no angle. You're gonna be blocked by pretty much every player on the field. So I can't get too far in front of the ball. Same scenario, as they go up midfield, I'm gonna do the same thing for the first possession of our defense. I'm gonna do the team bench, because the media, they're gonna go down here. So I'm gonna go behind the team bench, one or two plays, as much depth of field I can create my image, I'm gonna go for. So as they move forward and our defense is moving back, all right, let's say we get to the 40 or 35, all right, at that point in time, media is gonna be rotating around here. I'm gonna do the same thing, five yards behind the ball. Again, this is a single cam operation. There's no team, there's no three or four videographers on the field. If you have that, great. This is a single cam op. I gotta capture the best potential play my team can have in this moment. If I'm not locked on on a player individually, then I'll pan to the quarterback, a wider frame, and then I'm hoping for that sack or tackle for loss. So that's how I set up for defense, priority one being B-roll during the first possession of our offense and the first possession of our defense. And then as the game unfolds, I'm setting up a little bit wider and I'm following ball or I'm following a particular player, or I'm just locked in on the opposing quarterback and hoping for that sack, you know, that PBU play maybe downfield, or um, one of the linemen tips a pass, whatever the case might be. Fans are gonna be most energetic in the first and late and fourth quarter. Turn that camera around and see what's behind you. A lot of the time, the best shot is what's behind us. Now, we gotta do that and then turn back around to the field of play and set up a frame and know what's going on. So that's why you gotta be thinking ahead while things are happening in real time. But if it's slow team huddles and slow to get into the line, boom, turn around, hit record, team student section, ban, crazy fan, paint it up, going ham. You should be able to get all of those, you know, if you're filming the whole time and you're not on your phone. I'm not gonna be doing any of that. Now let's say I wanna get some defensive ISOs from a little bit of a different angle. I'll go from here as their offense comes on the field and our defense comes onto the field. I'm gonna go near the uh, field goal post and I wanna line up straight with our linebacker, safety, uh, corners, DNs. That way I can have a straight on angle or pretty close to a straight on angle and I can get the face of the linebacker over the middle. You can get some crazy depth of field in this shot. So subject A that you are in focus on at 281440, whatever your aperture is, all right, is so close to you, literally 15 yards roughly, that the background distance near infinity is so far. There's a lot of grass right here. It's gonna be much more shallow because of the distance from focus point A, your subject, to background versus over here, which is much tighter. But that's basically my philosophy as possession two and three and four and so on and so forth happen. Then I might be framing a little bit wider and just following ball because I got those B-roll cuts out of the way. And I'm gonna answer some questions that y'all had for me earlier on YouTube Live. Question is, how many cameras do you head out with and do you walk in with a strategy beforehand? One camera, again, if you have a team of videographers or cinematographers or whatever, the game plan would be completely different. This is a video breakdown of one camera crew, you and your camera. I don't walk in with like a physical piece of paper, like a shot list or anything. I guess I have a mental one. I like to live on instincts a little bit and try to capture in a different way. Do you shoot in the highest frame rate possible for your camera? Yes, I'm shooting high speed, high frame rate. That way I have the option of slowing it down in post. Now I do wanna mention this. I wanna be getting scratch audio. The benefit of a cinema camera is I can use my shotgun mic or if I'm micing someone up, I can record high speed, high frame rate, 90 or 120 or whatever I wanna do and still record audio. Because if you're shooting in high frame rate and you have no audio to lay underneath, then you need to get my sound pack. Tips for learning manual focus. I shoot 100% video, manual focus. I never use auto, I'm shooting manual, regardless of how good the auto focus system is, especially for sports, all right? Guys moving, coming in and out of frame. You know, I don't need my focus to be hunting, so I'm gonna control and pull my own focus. So I am basically controlling the zoom and the focus of the lens simultaneously, but I've been doing it for four or five years now that I can do it with my eyes shut. You just need to learn focal distance, 
Um, it's on the top of the lens. That's what those numbers mean. Practice makes perfect, right? It's like a sports quote. Next question, best lens for pregame locker room shots. The first lens I would use is the 35 millimeter F1.4 shooting wide open. And then I'd probably swap to my 85 millimeter F1.4. 35 and 85, you'll get two different looks and it'll look good. But yeah, that wraps up this video. Hopefully it was informative for you. Uh, hopefully you can take away one or two or three or even more things to what you already know and apply it to um, your next shoot that you have or football game that you film and it can make you that much better of a shooter. So like the video, comment below, tell me what you think. Go share this video. We'll see you next time. Ty's Eyes, we out.